this gentleman came in with a chief complaint of a sore throat. A contrasted CT of the neck was obtained. Scrolling through axial slices, you can see in the submandibular space, particularly on the right, there's multiple lymph nodes and some stranding. And as I continue superiorly, you can see there are these fluid collections that are partially rim enhancing in the floor of the mouth. And there's a lot of edema in the floor of the mouth and the lateral pharyngeal, parapharyngeal space with mass effect on the airway and defacement of really the molecula on that side. So something's going on here. Um, these rim enhancing fluid collections are very suspicious for abscesses. Um, and these are located in the floor of the mouth. Let me show you on coronal. Everything above the mylohyoid muscle is the floor of the mouth. So the mylohyoid muscle is like a sling that inserts on the lingual aspects of the mandibular bodies bilaterally. So this is the mylohyoid muscle and you can see that these fluid collections are on the right predominantly and are in the sublingual space as opposed to the submandibular space which is superficial or inferior to the mylohyoid muscle. Now these are fluid collections, they're rim enhancing and they're abscesses. Um, don't expect them to be round all the time. There are a lot of muscles in the floor of the mouth, the hyoglossus muscle, the genioglossus muscle, and it divides the floor of the mouth into sections. And so you can often get these kind of elongated fluid collections, but they are still abscesses, even though they're not round. So let's go back and try to figure out what is going on. So we've got things that look like abscesses, a lot of edema, we're suspecting infection. So what could be the cause? Obviously, um, want to look at tonsils, salivary glands, teeth. You know, I'd say the submandibular gland is maybe a little bit inflamed, but doesn't, doesn't seem to be centered within the inflammation. So let me show you on bone windows. Let's take a look at these teeth here. So again, I window so I can see all the tissues of the teeth. Take a look at this third molar on the right. Look at this third molar. It has a somewhat horizontal orientation. Look at it compared to this side. Look at the bone around it and the periodontal ligament that's around it. It's barely visible. On the right side, you can clearly see the periodontal ligament. There seems to be an increased space around the tooth. And there's also a cortical dehiscence here. So that's suspicious. There's no decay of this tooth. I don't see any demineralization, but something's going on around the tooth. Let me show you what this looks like on sagittal imaging. Again, let me window. There we go. So this is a partially erupted third molar. And this entity that I'm alluding to here is called pericoronitis. And it, it essentially only happens with partially erupted teeth. And it's almost always a third molar. And the reason why it happens is when it's partially erupted like this, only this part of the tooth is present in the oral cavity. This part of the tooth is in bone. When that happens, there's a flap of gingival tissue over the top that kind of is just propped up by this partially erupted tooth. And a lot of food and debris and bacteria build up underneath that flap. It's very difficult to clean. It can lead to infection. If the tooth is fully erupted, then you have a normal gingival attachment just like any teeth. There's no flap of tissue. And if the teeth is fully impacted and totally surrounded by bone, there's also no flap of tissue. So this essentially only occurs on 
uh, partially erupted teeth. It's called pericoronitis. So it's infection inflammation of the tissues around the crown. It's almost always with a third molar. And it's, it's an important entity um, to, to be aware of because it, if you saw this case and you describe all of the, the sublingual abscesses, the infection, the effacement of the airway, the ER doctor is probably going to call ENT who will put the patient on antibiotics, probably put drains in, but they probably won't extract the tooth. And that's really what's needed. Yes, drainage is good, antibiotics are good, but the source of the infection needs to be removed. Um, and that could go overlooked if this diagnosis, diagnosis is not specifically made. So again, this is pericoronitis of a partially erupted third molar tooth with resultant sublingual abscesses and peripharyngeal edema with effacement of the airway.